Welcome to another episode of the Funky Marketing Podcast. This is the podcast when I'm talking with, uh, first of all, I like to say like friends, virtual and real ones, people who are doing uh, good things for the good people and who are being also good people themselves. So today I have a pleasure to welcome the, our first female guest. So uh, <laughs> I, I would let her say her name and also a few things uh, about her. I think that's, that's, that's the best way. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, love how you started with the whole friends thing, you know, because I think, you know, we, we have interacted a lot on, on, on LinkedIn and I'm, you know, super, this is the first time I actually get to, to, to see yeah. you and have a conversation with you, you know, but I feel like I already know you. So, so that's awesome. So yeah, my name is Zina Blayachi. Um, I'm a marketing strategy consultant. I love everything startups. Um, so I did start my career in the corporate world and I quickly, you know, maybe we can talk about that later a little bit. <laughs> um, so I switched to, to the, the startup world. I'm completely in love with that. I'm a startup mentor in different uh, incubators. And yeah, I'm a strategy consultant for early stage B2B you know, startups and also co-founder and co-host of Pitch Slap. So there you go. Shameless plug. <laughs> that's, that's, that's interesting. I, li I like the name, the name a lot because uh, here we have um, a friend. She's also doing something, something like that. I don't know if it's called uh, Pitch Slap, but it's sort of similar something like that. She's also preparing startups uh, to pitch and those kind of things. So awesome. I, I found it interesting uh, the second that I, that I saw it. So uh, let's start with, uh, with the one thing I was just before, before we entered the call, I was listening to Bruce Springsteen. I don't know why, but sometimes I like to, to listen to him. And he says like, uh, you can start a fire without a spark, right? Dancing in the dark. So um, I think the, the spark right now is, is on LinkedIn, especially when it comes to B2B. So let's go and chat a little bit about why we should be on LinkedIn. Why should anybody uh, be on LinkedIn? Hmm. Yeah, do you, you want me to go first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? Okay, all right. Um, I think and, and you'll probably agree. I mean, the opportunity to, to, to really grow on LinkedIn was uh, f five years ago, six years, no? Um, however, that doesn't mean that today there isn't an opportunity, you know? The, it's, it's, it's one of the only platforms where the, the reach is still, is still pretty, pretty nice, no? So your content reach, I mean, in Instagram, Facebook, you know, Unless you're paying, uh, you're not. You're not. Your your content is not getting seen by by so many eyeballs. So definitely, it isn't. And I'd like to. I know that your viewers are way past this, but I'd like to, you know, say this again. It, it's not a platform where you go when you need a job. So when you, you know you're. You, you're tired of your job, so you start uh, interacting with people. The um, LinkedIn, the the algorithm knows this. No, so if you're consistently there, it's not the same as you know you disappearing for six months, a year, and then coming back and seeing, okay, what can I get out of this platform? So it's not a platform to get a job, right? Um, it's it's so much more uh, than that, and and we're gonna get into, I'm sure, personal branding, right? Which goes beyond the job that you're in because it's something that you take with you, um, and we've seen many examples of that. Um, yeah, I think I'll start with I start with that. <laughs> yeah, and, and the thing that you said, like it's uh, it was the time for the LinkedIn growth, like five six years ago to start. Um, hmm. I don't see it got me anything. So the growth just started like yeah. re recently, but um, what I'm seeing is that people who grew their accounts at that time, most of them are now like influencers, but not like mm -hmm. you and me, but somebody who has influencers under his name by LinkedIn. And most of those people are totally inactive. They, they grew their mm -hmm. account by, by doing something totally different. Let's say even from my team, he has around 70,000 followers, 
Uh, mm-hmm. And those followers came because he figured out the LinkedIn algorithm when it comes to be featured in LinkedIn articles at that time. So one article mm-hmm. got him like thousand followers. And from that time, him and also Yag were doing that and they figure out how the things are going. Now algorithm changed and now some things uh, are in the, in the first place instead of, instead of articles, instead of like LinkedIn groups. Back in the mm-hmm. days, you, I mean, you could have just spammed people by, by posting in 70 LinkedIn groups with one click. I mean, it yeah. was super, super cool from the perspective of somebody who is sharing, <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I get why we don't have that option anymore. <laughs> 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 yeah, that was that distribution was just too easy, no? <laughs> that, yeah. That, that, that's, yeah. And I mean, uh, we can easily find people from our target group on LinkedIn just by, by name, by position in the company, by seniority. Mm-hmm. We can see everything, right? Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's one of, one, of, one of the things that um, most people, you know, forget is that so let's say you're in a you're in a space. You're going to look for who are the influencers in that space. And when I say influencers, they don't necessarily have to have the the actual badge of influencer. You know, just who's moving people, who's who's getting all these comments and all that engagement, and and who as soon as he says something, you know, someone else is already posting about it and commenting, etc. So you find those, and then you find who's engaging. What are they saying? You know, all that is gold, you know, uh, the, the, all the engagements, the, especially, the, of course, the comment, you know, which is the comments, I think, are the only real engagements. But the, the comments could definitely help you, you know, and that's a whole nother subject. But who's, who's liking those posts? Who's commenting? And literally who? So these could be your target, um, your target customers. So, you know, you have them all there together and that's something a filter cannot give you. Um, so because taglines, headlines, uh, profiles, all this, they're just, you know, we're so bad at these things and we just stick with jargon. So, you know, a LinkedIn filter won't guarantee that you'll have, you know, your target group, but that will. Yeah. I'm so glad somebody else said that because I've been repeating that for a while. Uh, (laughs) thank you for that. And uh, I have, I have, I have uh, additional questions. When we talk about mm. taglines, filters, and everything, uh, do you see LinkedIn hashtags actually having uh, an impact or no? Are they useful uh, now or, you know, more or less? That's a super interesting uh, uh, question. I've... I, I think I asked myself this, you know, because every time I post, I, I put um, at least, you know, I put, I put three, you know, three, four. Um, but I, I would never, I don't think I've ever posted without a hashtag. That's so weird, no? And and I just do it. And I think it's, it's um, I, I don't think the hashtag in itself is going to get you anywhere, but it's, it's um, an, an aggregator. So it's, your initial engagement, if that you have, then it can help. Um, then again, the algorithm is one of those well, one of those things that we don't know much about, right? It's uh, we guess and you know we all have our hypotheses, but I don't think the hashtag in itself is going to get you. You know, I'm I'm going to use hashtag marketing, and everyone that's following that hashtag is going to see my post. No. Um, it can help you once you get your initial engagement from your first degree or second degree connections. No? Yeah, but I think like those interactions that happens in the, in the first hour, in the first half an hour are hmm. extremely important. And the way I see it, I stopped using hashtags. I mean, I'm using them for, um, from time to time, but I don't see any, any difference. Um, Maybe you get another another feed in which you will show up just by using hashtag. That may be mm-hmm. an advantage, but I don't mm-hmm. know. We'll see. So, 
let's say we well, can I, uh -huh. may, may I just jump yeah it just um, th there are people like for example I recently started promoting a hashtag which is less I more you okay because that's what I based my website on so that helps and and then Bilal also does you know death to fluff so that's your in in a sense people that look for death to fluff hashtag they'll see all his posts and all the relevant so it's it's sort of like a, a way to curate content around that that's a good way but that's like the other way around no uh, it's not using the hashtag to get exposure it's it's a, it's sort of like an aggregator of your own content no? um yeah, yeah i just i just wanted to say that yeah that's that's, that's true uh we were using like funky marketing hashtag for a while i don't know why we are, aren't using it maybe we should but it's good because it's hard to find somebody's content on LinkedIn. The search doesn't work that way. Uh, I mean, it's hard to find even something that has been posted like the last month, even yeah. harder to find something that's been posted like uh, a year ago. Yeah. So, okay. So LinkedIn, we are there, we are creating demand around our products or services yeah. and when exactly we do we come to the time when we get to performance when we get to see if we get out of uh, this demand something anything how do you see that situation that transition uh the the transition so you mean like actually um result no from yeah a result not necessarily performance uh marketing because i know that um I think that, you know, many people like uh, Chris Walker will tell you, you know, before you do demand, no, <laughs> you, you have to make sure that you have a buy-in at least at the inside in the company. Right. Um, and, and, and that you do by capturing the, the existing demand. But uh, when do you see it actually working? You know, things that you can't stick, you know, attribution to, um, when they start, you know, saying, you know, you, you're, I saw your, your post on, on LinkedIn the other day, or I saw, you know, um, someone, someone else, like a, a customer will, a client will recommend uh, my services. And I always pay attention to the words that they use, you know, mm -hmm. when actually it's like the telephone game, you know? So he told that person that Zenob was good at this and she can help with this. So I always try to grab that. Um, I think you start hearing things that I saw you hear. I listened to that podcast, you know, and, and that's when you start, um, you start seeing, and then mentioning um, just a, a silly example with pitch slap. Um, I'm starting to get mentions on sales posts. You know, uh, people are, you know, you know, on LinkedIn, you see a lot of people just taking roasting sales pitches that they get in the DMs, no? So um, some, some people actually tagged me and they said, what would Zenab do, if, if, you know, like how can we pitch slap them, no? <laughs> so, so all this, all this, no? Um, all this proves that there's, there's something. So there, you're, people are actually seeing what you're putting out there. Um, and you need to look for, uh, keep an eye out for, for these things. Um, hmm. Have you seen, that there is something that, that I'm seeing, I don't see many people are, are talking about it. I think hmm. you are probably seeing it. Uh, is that when people reach out to you, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know, from LinkedIn and, uh, I'm seeing that people who are reaching out to me sometimes aren't the people that I'm connected with. Oh, yeah. uh, not in the comments, not as a connections, maybe they are following me, uh, but I don't know at that moment that information. But uh, what I find out is they were watching videos and videos are uh, sort of a, like a mystical uh, content out there because you can see the likes you you cannot see who is viewing the videos but you can just see the number of people that a number of times that somebody watched the video and mm -hmm. uh, I think videos had uh, have 
bigger reach and bigger influence that we that we think they they do, right? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, absolutely. I mean, when you get when you get people uh, reaching out to you, they, they you don't even know. You want to start to to build that that journey, you no, know, to go back to how yeah, how they're connected to you, and sometimes it's pretty difficult unless you start asking questions. Um, but you know, once you and I'm sure it's happened to you too, where you've um, someone messaged you in, on LinkedIn, and you quickly look at their profile to see who you're connected with. Have what have you done? You no, know, to sort of we always we're always trying to understand, and sometimes unless you know you you ask the questions, you don't know, and you get you get surprised sometimes because I know I can't I can't remember exactly when it was, but. I remember I I had uh, been at an, at an offline event and and I asked you know I I asked a question you no know, at the at this event and someone remembered and I and I thought to myself when I asked that question I was like what a stupid question you know you know <laughs> no you know what a stupid question just shut up to be to ask these stupid questions shut up next time and someone remembered that and it was interesting to them and then they reached out to me. So you never know who's listening. Um, yeah. That was a pitch slap. <laughs> <laughs> right there. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I like those things. I'm also very direct. Like this morning, the, the client called me and they say, like, we won't continue the, to work together. And I said, okay, I know because we you didn't allow us to do what you hired us for. So there's no reason for us to continue cooperation. And she was like, I really like talking to you. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just so strange. Like, okay, we'll continue talking, but we're not going to work together anymore. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah. <laughs> uh, but on LinkedIn, especially like in the, in the last year, uh, when my reach and engagement were very, uh, on a lower level. I was sending message to each person that I'm connecting with. Not right away, but let's say like 20 days up to two months, maybe whenever I find time to like send 200 messages. And um, I was just presenting myself like a welcome message and asking them what do they do because I saw the profile and everything and I just want to get into the conversation. And I received the biggest feedback ever for everything that I'm doing on LinkedIn and not only on LinkedIn. I realized how many people are actually following what we are doing. They just don't interact for some reasons. And like I found out one fact that most of those people have seen me somewhere talking. Uh, because when I come here, when I moved here in Novi Sad, so uh, I went all over the country in different cities uh, inside the organization, which is connecting like all the IT community in Serbia. And I gave speeches, did workshops, all kind of things. And a lot of people saw me there. They never reached out. They never told me anything because it was like a huge crowd. And when I reached out to them, like if I didn't reach out, they wouldn't ever uh, do the opposite towards me, you know? And yeah. for, with some of them, we started working with some of them. We created like relationships. Some of them are here in Novi Sad, so we are going to, to, the co to grab a coffee and just have a chat. And it's mm. interesting, like, what can happen when you ask for a feedback, when you just are being kind, you know? Mm. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, and, and, and especially when, you know, you also get that feedback when you when you don't ask, no. Um, but when you're, in, I think, I think when you're being generous with what it is, not that you think you're the expert, and you know, that, can we swear on this podcast or not? Yeah. So that you know your shit, and no, there you go. I said it. <laughs> that you're an expert, you know your shit, and you know you're going out there. It's all ego. No, no, no. You're just you're not being selfish with what you know. So you're just putting it out there, right? Because everyone has at a different point in the journey. So your audience is not 100% prospects, is not, you know, qualified uh, uh, buyers. They're not 100% uh, knowledgeable in marketing. They're all at different stages, 
right? So you're just being you, no? Uh, sharing that knowledge and not being uh, not being selfish. So it hits it hits home with some uh, today, and uh, it'll hit home with others some other day. You can't control them. Mm. Yeah, that, that thing being myself got me in so much trouble, but it also <laughs> got me here where I am now. Right? Like I've been, I've been, let's say, punished so many times doing things mm. on my own while I was like the second man in, in the previous companies. Like, I don't know, I had like 200, 300 uh, euros less salary just because I, I did something. And in most of the cases, what things that I did were things that got us uh, out of the bad partnerships with, with bad clients. You know? And I was happy, like, okay, here's your 300 euros, I'm free. Like, that, that was <laughs> my mindset at the time. <laughs> and yeah, so tell me, uh, were you on LinkedIn when you were in the corporate world? Um, rarely. No, rarely, which is why, you know, this is, you know, what I started uh, today, what I said at the very beginning, it's, I've learned this the hard way, you know, so I wish I would have been, I wish, yeah. Mm. I'm interesting, interested in that transition from the corporate world to what mm. you are doing today. So, okay, we don't need to go into LinkedIn, but tell me how, how did you feel and how did everything go with that transition? Was yeah, it like easy transition it, or how did it happen? Um, I feel like some, sometimes when you're on the right track, no, I feel like somehow life has a way of, of working out. No? So, of course, it was hard work, yes, but somehow it just, you know, it just works out. I don't, I don't know how. I don't know how to explain it. Um, but, yeah, from, from, from the co corporate world, so the, I think, I think the only thing I kept from, I kept a couple of things from the corporate world is, you know, the nice jackets, I'll wear them with jeans and, you know, but I like this. That's the only thing. <laughs> but the, in terms of mindsets and everything, uh, everything changed. I think the idea is I have a, a you know, a product uh, marketing background. I really like, you know, product and, and, and all that. And one of the, one of the challenges I had um, was being so far away from the customer, so far away. And uh, I just felt like sometimes, you know, once you did come out with a, you know, you, you were building on hypotheses and then uh, there were no real facts. And then once you did put your product out there and that was supposed to be a moment you were, you were proud of, um, well, things have changed. Uh, your, you know, sales, you know, the, the sales, I mean, it was so long, you know, from, especially if you're doing, um, uh, we were, we were HQ. Um, so we had, you know, the, the sales teams in the, in the different, in the different countries, uh, they had their trade marketers, you know, so then the, then you had the, the end user, the, the end customer. So the, the chain was so long that how do you do marketing? I'm, I'm so far away from, from the end user and I'm supposed to be developing a product for him or her, right? And that is something that I, I did not like. So I liked, you know, uh, other sides um, of that, but that was something that really, uh, to me, and that's, that's what really got me into, into marketing, um, that getting closer to the, the, end, uh, the end user. And obviously startups is like the quickest way to actually, you know, shorten that, that chain because you get into a startup and you're, I mean, literally you're supposed to be talking to, to your, your end user. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, I mean, I've been talking directly with customers while working in like B2C for, for years. Uh, mm -hmm. But so when I moved into the other space, I tried to, to get that mindset also, also in, the, in a B2B. And right now, like we are not working that much with startups. I always try to, to have at least one so we can like get into the dirt and see how the things are developing. Just to like keep the team motivation on a, on a certain level. Mm -hmm. uh, but like 
I'm thinking, okay, I'm 36 years old. So I want to work with companies that have already established culture and uh, values and those kind of things. I've been working with companies who are on the other side for, for so many years now. And I want to help those that are doing good things get on, a, on, a, on the next level. And because of the things mm-hmm. that we are doing when it comes to like demand, brand, and even performance, we, we need that that one thing, like that culture in the company, that they know mm-hmm. what they are gathering around. You know, it, it's no matter if it's product or the service, but they know what's their goal and when they're they are actually going to. So, but it was hard mm-hmm. for me when I started to find to find uh, a way, a niche, an industry. So. Uh, First, we started, okay, we're going to do B2B, but we also have e-commerce, we have like solopreneurs, we have SaaS, we have all kinds of different things. And while doing, we uh, made a profile. It's, it wasn't there from the start. So how it was for you? How did you decide who is your audience, in which way are you going, and those kind of things? Um, how did I decide? First of all, by doing. so. Um, you know, I've only been a freelancer for almost, uh, you know, th- three years now. So before that, I was, you know, obviously full time uh, in a in a project. So you know, the decision is 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 there. You now you're you're in that project, and, and if, whether it's B two B SaaS or B two C, but as a freelancer, it's a working progress. Um, the first the first year, I think I, you know, it was. I had to make, I was, you know, against the wall. I had to make a decision because if not, your, your message is just not clear. No. Um, especially you can see it when you pitch. No, I would see when I pitched. So they would get excited because of the things that I share and stuff like that. But if I tell them my pitch, you know, they're the twinkle in their eyes, just, there's not not much interest, no, because I'm not resonating with them, no. So the you know, with them or I'm I'm just not being specific. Um, it's a, it's a work in progress though. Um, so I've I've narrowed it down to B two B early stage. Um, I I love you know all the the product onboarding. So I'm re- I really like SaaS. That's for sure. Um, I like SaaS, but I'm not ready to to say that I'm a SaaS, uh, B2B SaaS early stage uh, startup marketer. Maybe, maybe this is my, you know, this is me. I'm saying it today live <laughs> on your show. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's, it's more doing. It's more doing. And one of, one of the things that I found that um, has, has made, me, made me stop is that I mean, if you believe in cross-pollination, when you're a freelancer, you build up on knowledge from different sectors, from different companies, and then you provide more value to the next client, right? Um, because you you have all this experience. Um, you yourself uh, uh, gain more knowledge, no? So you improve, you improve, improve your, your, your know-how. Um, but if you, if you say, okay, I'm SaaS, no, let's let's say this. Uh, let's take this as an example. Then all your frameworks will be for SaaS. So the next client that comes in, it's boom. You know, we do this first, then we do this first, then we do that first. But if you're not, let's say in the case of you know a marketer that still hasn't decided whether they're B two C, B two B, etc., it's hard to to get a, a framework. And and without a a process and a framework, you're not giving out as much value, and you're wasting a lot of time time that could be you know invested in reading some learning something new, going to the gym, spending time with your friends, loved ones. You no, know? um, so I think it's it's more that that idea of process and. It need to be more efficient. Now, I think that was the word I was I was looking for. Um, it's it's the need for efficiency that makes you um, decide, you know, which which way you have to go because you can't be everything for everyone. No, 
Yeah. yeah I, I think we, we just had uh, an example of how do you do it with the startups using your own example, just like make things specific and focus yeah. on efficiency, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Especially because you're a one man show at the beginning. It's you're, especially for startups, I mean, you, you don't have a team of 20 people. So it's time is the, the most valuable resource that, that you have time. That's it. Yeah, uh, I felt it. I felt it on uh, on like funky marketing while I was starting. So mm-hmm. we're not a startup, but anyway, mm-hmm. like uh, I didn't plan to hire anybody in 2020. I was just like, okay, it's mm-hmm. my first time being uh, being an entrepreneur, and I wanna mm-hmm. learn the game. Like marketing is okay. This is something that I know, but that risk of like uh, leading the company and uh, mm-hmm. people, not people, I mean, just running a business. And um, I've been doing that for, for other people. I, I haven't been doing it for myself. So I wanted to get there, but let, then like um, lockdown happened and all the clients that I have just called me, okay, we don't want to hire other people. Can mm-hmm. you do more things for us? So I say, okay, I need more people, <laughs> and this is how we how we start uh, growing. But one of the first client that that uh, that I had as Funky Marketing is Impa Hub Belgrade. So uh, they are like the co-working, but also a pre-accelerator that's working with with startups, mostly like mm-hmm. tech startups, like food tech, um, edu tech, those kind of uh, niches, and. I was actually the one who uh, wasn't working directly with startups, but getting startups to the program. So mm-hmm. I got to experience a lot of things to learn so much about, about startups. And uh, I started like being a mentor for the startups, those kind of things. So tell me, what are some things that you're seeing in, in those new startups, some things that are common and some things that they can, can improve? Um, well, uh, common is is you know the the, the passion you know um, that's that's the most uh, obvious one, which has you know has has its uh, downside too because blind passion um, could lead you to <laughs> to terrible um, to to terrible places. But what am I seeing that they could definitely improve? Um, well, it, first of all. 2020, if we're talking about this year, especially, there are so many more, uh, you know, entrepreneurs, uh, so many businesses. And I think this is, that is great, you know, because uh, it actually, you know, the tools are there, you can do it. Not everyone's going to make it, of course, but at least they're trying, they're, they're out there, people are doing, um, some people, you know, have lost their jobs. So they're, they're betting on this. Uh, other people are, you know, that still have uh, found, you know, still have their jobs are betting on a side gig, uh, which I think is pretty cool. I know a few of those uh, side gig, you know, they're taking advantage of, of this opportunity to, to learn something new and who knows, maybe leave the other job and, 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 um, and, and go full time, um, dedicate their time to that side gig so i think it's it's pretty pretty cool um in terms of things that they they could improve it's you know talking to your customers i'm gonna repeat it talking to your customers right (laughs) um it seems (laughs) right um i know it's hard like i'm you know, I'm in it. I know it is hard. It's a working progress. So whatever you need to do, uh, whether it's put it in your calendar, put it as a as one of the KPIs, like number of prospects or customers that you've spoken to in a, each week, whatever you need to do. Um, I even thought of, maybe we can talk about this. I even thought of tying it to the budget. No? Uh, if we tie it to the budget, does that mean that we'll actually do it? Um, but then again, we're not kids, you know, we shouldn't be able to, to, 
it's, I mean, if, if we know that something is important, why don't we just do it, you know, as opposed to having your big boss saying, uh, did you do this or did you do that? No, we should believe yeah. that we're that's hu- important. We're humans. No? We're humans. That's how, that's how it goes. <laughs> like, nothing, nothing goes as planned and we need to have always that in mind. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know. Talking to customers is one of the, the biggest ones I am. Um, I see this again and again and again. It's it's one of the, the most difficult things to um, to surpass um, and to do on a on a regular uh, basis because this is not just during customer validation. This is you know even after you do have you know your your customer base, you have to consistently you know be listening to sales calls or talking to prospects, uh, going on on um, on on podcasts and and talking and um it's it's something that you need to consistently do um and and i don't know how how else to say it so that it actually uh resonates more no um yeah it, ju- it just uh brings me um the, the things that are, that i'm noticing and especially the, i don't know how it is in other countries where are you working mm-hmm. with startups in barcelona or somewhere else well, um, I, mostly online, so it's uh, everywhere. Anywhere. But yeah, I'm based in Barcelona. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because uh, like I'm talking with a lot of start- startups here from south southeast Europe, and the mm-hmm. things that I'm seeing is like two developers sit one next to next to other in a company. Say, man, I have this idea. Let's go work <laughs> on it. <laughs> and that's it. They don't talk to anybody. It's just like we. I have this problem. Probably you have it too. Yes, it's two of us. Let's let's develop something. And, and this <laughs> is not it. And in most cases, that's how it goes. Like yeah. here in Southeast Europe, we have a lot of people with uh, with good technical skills. So there are good universities, and people are learning so many things. But we don't have anybody that knows how to develop mm-hmm. a business. We don't have like business development part. And when it comes to uh, access to, uh, to venture capital, that's like zero to none. It's changing mm-hmm. right now. There are a few people changing it, but, uh, but those are kind of restrictions. What's, mm-hmm. what's your impression when you, when you work with them? Um, I think that the, you know, if if it, if the business, not all businesses are, are are meant to be funded, they could be scalable, but it it doesn't necessarily mean that you know if you're a startup, um, you need to go out to get funding. So I think that most people confuse those things, right? Um, but if if you need uh, that that funding, uh, you need to be able to de risk de risk for for the investor, and. One of the most obvious uh, ways, well, the, I think the, maybe the only way to de-risk is showing that you have traction. So, you know, you work back. Let's take, you know, you want the funding. What do you need to get the funding that show that you've learned and you've got traction? And even more um, more so today because their uh, investors have access to so many more pitches, you know, so everything is online. So there's, they're Get, have access to more and um and and there you know the 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 whole covid uh, situation has added on a layer of risk of risk right so you really need to de-risk you show that you have traction so to be able to get traction what do you need no let's if we if we work backwards and what what do you need you need to have spoken to your customers right to know if really the hypotheses that you have in your head, you know, the story that you've built, you know, like the two developers, the example you just gave, um, if, if it, there's actually someone willing to, to buy it, no? And not just someone, there are many people like that someone, and is that market a growing market? And is that um, a need that happens again and again, you know, like, uh, like, like Instagram, like do we need to check it? uh consistently you know so there there's a, a list of things um but yeah i mean it, it's all tied to traction i think um that's one of the the, the biggest ones mm. yeah or like in in other words it's also like mvp 
just show him that you have something that uh, can give results. Because basically, pe venture capital people, they're interested in making money, right? That's, mm -hmm. that's so obvious. That's why they invest in something. And they need to see either that you have a great product, but you can maybe improve your team, or you have a great team but doesn't have like the perfect product yet. Uh, mm -hmm. Those kind of things are always important. Like I'm seeing that team comes right next to the to the product, and it's equally equally important. And mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you are seeing this, but also seeing a lot of people in startup world, they get emotionally attached to what they are creating, to their startup, <laughs> to their idea. You know, yeah. and if it doesn't work, and you get the feedback, and you see it's not working maybe it's time to, to stop working on it and move on to something else. <laughs> the, the art of knowing when to quit, no? <laughs> um, uh, the, 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 you know, one of the first things that I said is the passion, no? Passion, um, and passion is great, but it can also lead to what you just said, which is, you know, I'm just passionate about this, blindly passionate about this. <laughs> and, and there's only the outside, you know, your network, your, your prospects, um, your team that can keep you in check. Um, because if not, yeah, definitely you're just blinded and you're gonna, you're gonna be the only one, no, running this one. <laughs> So uh, I have a question before I, I ask you something else, but it just came to mm. my mind. So um, what do you think, when is the right time for a startup to invest in marketing? This is a common question and I see it a lot. So I want to see uh, how do you think about it? Same, you know, we usually get the, the question in our, in our sessions of when should we start selling? The, the answer is yesterday, no, right? So it's the same thing. It's just that when we think investing in marketing, I think we confuse, um, you know, budget. Like when should I take a budget and put it, you know, uh, put that one and put, put the name marketing. I think you're already investing your time from the very beginning. Like you should be marketing from the very beginning, you know? And especially if we get into uh, building, uh, building brand, uh, uh, all this. But you should be in the very beginning investing. Another thing is performance marketing, right? That's those are two, those are two different things. But from day one, um, everything you know, everyone should be investing their time in in marketing. And I think what in one of your recent posts. Um, I think it was either you or, or Ivan, uh, where it's, you know, demand generation is not just a marketing thing. It's, it's everyone, uh, everyone's responsibility. Now at pitch slap, we say that, you know, what's that pitch that everyone could, could be pitching even your developer when he's or, or she is at, uh, an event in, in their, their community of development stuff, right. Can pitch the same story. No, everyone needs to, to be um, to be pitching uh, this 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 story, everyone needs to be marketing. So I don't know if um, that was the the answer you were expecting. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a good one. I I totally agree. And uh, also one thing that people uh, forget is that like you said, it marketing is not advertising. Advertising is mm -hmm. just a part of the of the picture, and mm -hmm. um, also like the story itself is part of the marketing and hmm. the story might be also besides those assets that we said like the product or the team or anything else that's that's included the story hmm. is the one that will decide how uh, or are we going to get the investment whatever we are pitching um, mm -hmm. so the story might be the most important thing so what do you say how, how do you go with startups when it comes to the story development and those kind of things um, when, I mean, most of them, like the, the example I gave you of, of um, everyone on the team pitching, right? So everyone, there's, well, if you, if you want to replace, uh, uh, your, you know, remove pitch and um, say, you know, a one-liner or uh, whatever you want to call it at the end, it's one coherent message that comes from the top, right? So the, the CEO 
has uh, owns this this story, no, and then it comes out in different uh, in different ways. It comes out in your one liner. It comes out in your pitch deck. It comes out. So there is definitely a coherence of of this uh, of this story. I mean, we love stories, right? Um, it's just that not everyone is good at storytelling. Yeah. So not everyone has that. We're much more comfortable talking about features. That's that's for sure. Um, we're not even comfortable talking about benefits, no? Uh, and, and usually we confuse the benefits and the features and then and we have a list of 10, 10 things that are the, 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 main, the main benefits, which in, in theory there are features. So that's for a whole nother stage, no? So I think we're... Just the fact that we don't know how to write a good story, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't. So you can ask for help, you can read up on that, at least try, you know, that's that's the only thing. But definitely stories is, is the best way, you know, we've done stories that have been around for generations, no? And that's that's what we remember most, how they made us feel, no? Yeah, or, or you, or you called Pitch Lab and Zineb, right? If you need help with, with the stories and everything. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, and I have an additional question. We are slowly uh, mm -hmm. getting to the, to the end. Uh, like, oh. you, you, you said that, yeah, time passes fast. Uh, you said uh, that... I can't, I can't believe it. <laughs> yeah, we are talking for 50 minutes already. Uh, <laughs> I know. The, like... You said that the story goes from the CEO down, and what what if the CEO is the guy who said, "I only want to code, to put my headphones on, my music, and, and to code." And if I have to have to do the the presentation, the pitch, okay, I will do it. But what do you say to those kind of people if they have somebody better in the team? Should the CEO do it, or he, somebody else can do it instead of him? Yeah, um, that's a super, super great example um, uh, because generally sales, let's say just to, to talk about, you know, they're all connected, but generally sales, you know, it's the, the founders that are, that are the, the first ones to sell, right? So before you get a sales team, the founders have to actually learn, you know, what's, uh, what actually resonates, what works, what doesn't work, um, et cetera. And if you have if you have someone that's uh, very you know inside in uh, developer uh, and they founded the the company alone in your example because if they founded the company with someone else generally two people you know they one will bring in the the inside you know inside in the other one the inside out so the the outside the the social part the the more the contact but if it weren't the case then yeah definitely the next it it's not about who who gives it because it could be someone that that is it does the the marketing it's just that the ceo has to believe it it has to be that's that's the one thing so that everyone is aligned with, with one story, no matter if it's a newsletter or a one-liner or an ad or whatever. Uh, but it, it has to believe it. And, um, and yeah, 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 he has to believe in, in that. Uh, and he has to look at, even if he's a, co you know, he's a developer at heart, um, he must believe in this business that it's going to go from A to, to B and it's going to, it has a vision and no. So I'm sure it's okay if the, you know, the, the marketing person, or if they have a, a co-founder or CMO do that. I've seen that many times um, um, because, you know, us marketers are just so much more, no, <laughs> out there and no. Um, but yeah, 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 I have to believe it. Uh, the CEO has to believe it, I think. What do you, what do you, have you seen that? Yeah, that uh, I, I came up with, with that question because last, last year at this time I was a startup mm -hmm. mentor on an advertising festival here and there were like three startups that uh, were about to, to pitch in the finals. Mm -hmm. Like it was so boring, like all of them. But <laughs> then came the third one. <laughs> first two like they uh -huh. were boring then came the third one and it was mm -hmm. it uh, appears to be like my uh, a girl from my hometown 
Like, mm-hmm. She's just somebody who's interested in data. So she came up with the idea. It was a great idea. And they made her um, to the presentation. She's not the girl who is like free to talk on, on those kind of occasions. And it mm-hmm. was like somebody made me come here and talk about my product. You know, so yeah. <laughs> it was total disaster if you ask me. And I asked her, she said, it was really a disaster. Like, I'm not the <laughs> one who should be pitching. <laughs> yeah. um, it's interesting. I don't know if we have a couple more minutes, but this, this yeah, one is yeah. interesting because I, I believe that everyone should be able to pitch. Um, I, I really feel that everyone should be able to pitch. That's a super great exercise. Now, whether, you know, it's, you know, someone puts in more energy than someone else or because they're just a better, you know, there are people that are better at this um, uh, with the, you know, the pauses and the tone and there, but everyone should be able to pitch um, the, the pitch. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And everybody should at least know a few things about um, public speaking, about those kind of things, just so they can present themselves. In, in the right way. And we didn't mm-hmm. learn that like uh, we're just born like that. Somebody maybe, maybe is, but uh, mm-hmm. like you and I, we might not have those things when it comes to like taking pauses, those kind of things. We get into the jams and we get people involved in what we are saying, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm coming back each year. I think Facebook is reminding me out of my first. Um, presentation um, on the, in English when my mm-hmm. English uh, was a lot worse than, than it is right now and I was, <laughs> I was doing a presentation about um, collectivism, how people are clicking and not really engaging uh, offline like using uh-huh. wart hogs in the woods as an example all kind of things and it was like the last presentation uh, before the lunch and like I finished it in like 10 minutes and people were still se- sitting over there, didn't go to lunch. So I said, do you want me to tell you another story? They said, yes. So, <laughs> so I continue telling the story uh, right at the beginning of the presentation. The, the girl from the organization came with a mobile and started to record everything. So it's on YouTube. And <laughs> like I started to tell them the story why I should be active, uh, like about activism. And uh, it was the story that included ex-girlfriend. I mean, it's a totally imaginary story. I heard it somewhere else, so I just uh, told them the story. But uh, I was able to tell the story the right way because I engaged them. I asked them, like, what did she mm. do? What did I do? Those kind of things. And, um, like, still up to this day, some of them, uh, they don't believe me that uh, the girlfriend was somebody who doesn't exist. <laughs> it's crazy yeah 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 i can imagine story because they, they i think it's you know because they felt you made them feel a certain way and and they they don't want to believe that that's fake no yeah and and i didn't like uh think about things that i don't have like my english wasn't perfect those kind of things but mm-hmm. i knew that i can send out the message and that's, that's the only thing that's important. Everything else will just follow and be better in time. Yeah, absolutely. I love that, love that message, mm, that last one. Yeah, I'll send, you, I'll send you the video. You will laugh. <laughs> yeah, please do. <laughs> please do. Uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, is there anything that I forgot to ask you or you forgot to, to say or it's something that you just want to let it out of yourself? <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> um, no nothing nothing for now looking forward to another chat uh maybe i'll have you on uh the chats that i that i do nice. and um no no super super happy to have finally met you and uh likewise yeah, likewise to, and i still have to watch uh the rest of your interview with yag which is you know a great opening. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. like yeah, Yag was, uh, we were talking, actually starting, and he was like, duh, 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 duh. I said, man, this, <laughs> this guy who is doing transcription for us will have a hard job. 
<laughs> but yeah, Yag yeah. is like super great. We had virtual coffees yeah. before and just mm. hang out and mm. super nice guy. I, I like to host all of you in uh, here in Serbia for starters. Uh, mm, it's good. We can take some time to mention this. So my idea before Corona strikes was to organize uh, an offline event, an unconference mm -hmm. for the people in the marketing world, maybe creatives, maybe. Uh, to gather them uh, in one place to do everything but marketing. So um, mountain bikes, um, kayaking, hiking in the woods, uh, all kind of things, just enjoying near the river. And in the evenings, we get uh, a few like professionals who can uh, shine a light on, on the marketing, give us something, uh, some new perspectives near the, mm -hmm. the fireplace and mm -hmm. um, we get to have one-on-one -on -one intimate conversations, you know, and mm -hmm. basically to build a community from there. And the idea was to organize one in Balkan Mountains near my hometown. So because it's like two rooms, three actually room for 20 people. So we will all be in one object. So uh, all connecting and then I can move it all around the world. So that's still an idea, but uh, we're rating a uh, better health situation, right, to do it, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, absolutely. I mean, a, a funky, funky retreat. Um, yeah, that's you know, a good where name. You, where, you, <laughs> yeah, where you go each each year, it's it's somewhere different. That sounds that sounds amazing. As long as you didn't mention any wine or beer, as long as there's some, you know, I don't of think course, you mentioned. Of course, yeah. it's unconference. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Yeah, super cool. Uh, Zineb, thank you for, for being here. Thank you for doing this, this with me. Uh, I'm sure we'll have uh, a second conversation either or, or this podcast or, or yours or somewhere else. Maybe Luke yeah. will invite us to, to uh, have oh, a, right. a group conversation. Right. <laughs> so we'll see uh thank you once again and like keep in touch on on the link definitely thank you so much <laughs>